Sefer Shmot, Parshat Truma. In Parshat Truma, the recently escaped Bnei Yisrael are instructed on how to build the Mishkan, or the tabernacle, to function as the earthly dwelling place of the Shekhinah, God's presence, during the period of wandering in the desert. The plan that God relays through Moshe is of a resplendent, portable structure, acacia wood, overlaid with gold, sumptuously dyed textiles, and animal skin coverings, all accented with precious metals, stones, oils, and incense. Early on in the Parsha, it's established that the materials of this divine undertaking will be provided by Bnei Israel. Tell the Israelite people to bring me gifts. You shall accept gifts for me from every person whose heart is so moved. The word here that JPS translates as gifts is truma, which is where we get the name of our Parsha. Truma can also be translated as offering. What's notable about this offering is that it is entirely optional, quote, from every person whose heart is so moved. Each person gives or does not give according to their heart. It's an offering of free will. In his commentary on this section, Rashi notes that such a voluntary offering is distinct. As well, the medieval Italian commentator, Rabbi Avadia ben Jacob Sforno, expounds on this, that the procedure here is distinct from the public charity fund, which was treated as a mandatory tax. Rather, contributions for the tabernacle were accepted only from volunteers. So if you're wondering how these recently escaped slaves had anything at all to give, one midrash states that precious stones and pearls rained down alongside mana. Another explains that loot was taken from the shores of the Red Sea after Pharaoh's troop drowned. This parsha has much to teach about cultivating our own motivations for giving. Rather than letting our giving be arbitrary or incidental, waiting for someone to come knocking with an ask, we should nurture clarity in ourselves. What matters to us actively? To what causes can we give not just with complacence, but with passion? To the commentators on Exodus 25, it's notable that the contributions for the divine enterprise of the tabernacle are born from generosity of spirit. A person should not make a contribution until he was in the proper frame of mind, notes the Or HaChaim. Considering the wording, trumati, my gift, he continues, the Torah also may wish to teach that the term, my gift, cannot be used except when the donor has donated willingly, generously, with all their heart. In all that we give, from the financial and material to the emotional and spiritual, the gift is more profound when it comes not, not out of begrudging resentment, but from a place of depth of heart. We can give with an understanding that God blessed us with these resources, and that it is our role to contribute these resources to the well-being of our community. We can give with love, because the truth is, how we give matters. In the Mishnah Torah, the Rambam expounds on eight levels of tzedakah, charity. The lowest form of charity is that done with resentment or unwillingly. It's actually preferable, according to this hierarchy of tzedakah, to give a needy person less than what they need, but to do it with a pleasant countenance than to give it out of resentment. It's true that in the case of our Parsha, we're not talking about helping a needy individual, but rather building a Jewish society together. But what remains true is that the attitude we take toward our giving actually affects the nature of what we give. We often think about cultivating our minds, the need for education, the bettering of ourselves intellectually. When it comes to the heart, we might think that there's nothing to learn, that what we feel comes naturally and can't be cultivated. And while there's something to allowing ourselves to feel whatever comes up for us, that is to say, not repressing real emotions, there's also something very real about the possibility of cultivating our emotional lives. They say the longest path in the world is from the head to the heart. And truly, it's a journey of growth and change that allows us to embody our values on an emotional level. This is the work of Musar, the spiritual practice of an ethical life. We might say, I know that supporting Project X is important, but do I know it so deeply that I give to the project full-heartedly? Has the imperative of that giving journeyed from my head to my heart? In Judaism, 
Emotions are codified through action. Don't just feel joy. Don't just feel uplifted. Give. The goal is not merely to feel and not merely to give, but rather to give in a way that allows ourselves to be changed for the better. And so too in our ethical lives and our activist lives. It's not enough to just believe in the right cause or give to the right organizations. We need to engage in our avodah, our personal work of self-transformation, while doing the right thing. This is what in philosophy is called virtue ethics. The idea that leading an ethical life is transformative, that the self is changed as a result of our actions and choices. When it comes to institution building and movement making, it's easy to feel that you as an individual don't matter. What's one brick in a new building? Does it really matter if I show up to the 10,000 person protest? But this verse of our Parsha, from every person whose heart is so moved, is a reminder that you matter. Your heart matters. Your inner life is as sacred as the actions you take. In this parsha, we're building a dwelling place for the divine on earth. This is a collective endeavor for B'nai Yisrael of cosmic portions. And yet, at the heart of the matter is the heart itself. Judaism is so much about the heart. In Tanakh, we are told you must love God with all your heart and trust God with all your heart. In the Talmud, we are told that the heart itself has 60 emotions. It speaks, falls, stands, grieves, contemplates, overflows, awakens, glorifies. When we give according to our hearts, we act ethically both as community members and individuals. In all things, we must balance our self sense of individuality and community. The communist says it's all about the collective. The libertarian says it's all about the individual. Torah wants to reject these two extremes. We are B'nai Yisrael, we are humanity, but we are still individuals with individual hearts. In this parsha, we join a collective cause in accordance with our individual hearts. Rav Hirsch notes that the very word truma can be understood as formed from the verb rum, resh, vav, mem meaning to be uplifted or to be elevated for an exalted goal. Whatever we do, however we give, what makes it sacred is that it comes from the heart. Shabbat Shalom.